This is section 5.3, part two on the fundamental theorem of calculus, part two. So this is now gonna enable us to find definite integrals and get the exact value, which is a great theorem. So fundamental theorem of calculus part two, FTC two. So from FTC one, fundamental theorem of calculus part one, if G of X is defined to be the integral from A to X, constant variable of F of T DT, where F is continuous, then G prime of X is equal to F of X. Okay, so that means G is an antiderivative of little f. Now let capital F be any antiderivative of little f. Okay. So that means G and capital F differ by a constant. If I have one or more antiderivatives of a function, they differ by a constant C. That is G of X is equal to capital F of X plus C. Okay, now if I plug in X equals A, G of A equals F of A plus C, but G of A is zero because that's the integral from A to A in definition. So I plug in A right here, G of A is zero. So that means zero equals F of A plus C or C is negative F of A. So I found C to be negative F of A. So G of X is now F of X plus C. I can rewrite it as G of X is capital F of X minus capital F of A. <clears throat> now I plug in X equals B. G of B is capital F of B minus capital F of A, but G of B is defined to be the integral from A to B of F of T dt, capital F of B minus capital F of A. So we could stop here, but now that I don't have any X anymore here, I can switch this back to using the letter X. So FTC2, integral from A to B of F of X dx is capital F of B minus capital F of A. This is fundamental theorem of calculus part two. You're not responsible for this derivation. I'm responsible for the derivation you're responsible to use this. Okay, so basically you anti-differentiate, you integrate. The theorem says you can pick any anti-derivative. So the easiest one to pick is where C is zero. So we normally don't add any constant. Uh, remember when we were doing indefinite integrals, your answer was blah, 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 plus C. Here you don't need to plus C. So just capital F of B minus capital F of A, let C be zero. <clears throat> okay, this is the exact answer of the integral. Okay, we don't have to chop it up into so many pieces and do you know, lower estimate, upper estimate, or midpoints and all that stuff. We can get the exact answer if we can find an antiderivative. So here are many examples. Integral from one to three of x squared plus two x minus four. Okay, so we integrate x cubed over three plus two x squared over two minus four x. Okay, by convention, the one to three the funny looking S, it migrates over to the right side and straightens out. So one to three like this. You plug in three, you plug in one and subtract. So plug in three, 27 divided by three is nine. Three squared is nine minus four times three minus parentheses one third plus one minus four. This is six. And I decided to distribute the negative. So minus one third minus one plus four. That is six minus one plus four, nine minus a third, eight and two thirds. Eight and two thirds is the exact value of this integral, not an approximation, it's exactly. <clears throat> 29, integral from one to nine of radical x dx. Quick time out, what are we finding? Here's radical x between one and nine. I'm finding the exact area under the curve. It's amazing that we can find the exact area, not an approximation, but the exact area. So all we have to do is integrate. So this is x to the one half. So by the power root, that's x to the three halves divided by three halves means times two thirds from one to nine. Factor out to two thirds, plug in nine, nine to three halves minus plug in one, one to the three halves. So nine to the three halves means square root of nine, three cubit 27 minus one to anything is one. So that's 26 times two, 52 over three. That's the exact area under the curve here. 31, integral from pi over six to pi over two, cosecant t, cotangent t, dt. Integral of this is negative cosecant t. You might recall the derivative of cosecant t is negative cosecant t, cotangent t. So the integral of this, you have to put a negative in front of it. Okay, and I don't like the negative, so I can flip these two around, you might recall, make it a positive and put pi over six on the top and pi over two in the bottom. So it's cosecant pi over six minus cosecant pi over two. <coughs> Cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine. Sine of pi over six is a half, reciprocal is two. Sine of pi over two is one, flip it, it's one, two minus one is one. 39, 
eight over one plus x squared, treat it as eight times one over one plus x squared. That's eight times inverse tangent of x from one over radical three to radical three. So it's eight times inverse tangent of radical three minus inverse tangent of one over radical three. This comes out to be pi over three. This is pi over six. Okay, so I have, uh, turns out to be two pi over six minus pi over six, which is pi over six times eight, eight pi over six, four pi over three. Okay. <clears throat> Problem 33, integral from zero to one of one plus r cubed dr, the letters don't really matter. Okay, so I'm finding this area here. So one plus r to the fourth over four from zero to one. Okay, I can, even though there's a complicated expression, well, not too complicated, I can still do the power root if the derivative of the inside is one. Now, if this had been one plus r squared, that'd be a different story altogether. We'll tackle that in the next section. Okay, so plug in one, I have two to the fourth over four, plug in one, uh, plug in zero, I have one to the fourth over four. So that's 16 minus one over four, 15 over four. Thirty-seven integral from zero to one of x to the e plus e to the x, so that's x to the e plus one over e plus one. That's a power root, but the integral of e to the x is just e to the x from zero to one. <clears throat> plug in one, one over e plus one plus e minus plug in zero, that zero, but e to the zero is one, so one over e plus one plus e minus one. Final answer. Okay, so that was part two of five point three fundamental theorem of calculus part two. Next time, 5.4, we do a lot of the same types of problems, but we're mixing indefinite integrals with definite integrals.